Professor Rangham, <laughs> welcome back to Cambridge. Well, thank you, Professor McGrew. We're keen to hear what your latest ideas are on chimpanzees and human evolution and such things. Um, tell us, please. My latest ideas? Well, um, the latest paper that uh, our group has published from Kimali is uh, something rather charming about chimpanzees, which is that the uh, females and the males play with sticks in different ways. The females carry them about the place and occasionally uh, treat them like dolls. And the males, if you give a, a stick the same size uh, as a female carries about to a male, he's more likely to use it as a weapon. So basically, uh, we're finding that the tendency to uh, use toys in the human-like way of females playing with dolls and males playing with weapons goes back into our past. So, we are told in the textbooks that this is a matter of socialization when it applies to human children. The interesting thing about the chimps is that there's no evidence of socialization because the mothers never do it. The females only do this until they have their first baby and then they stop completely. So there may be some socialization in the sense that they are learning from older juveniles and older adolescents to do this, but they're learning from within. They are copying, but nobody is uh, deliberately teaching them. Thank you. Professor Rangham, you've published a book recently called Catching Fire, which seems to end up on the cookbook section in some bookshops, but I think it must be about more than that. The subtitle is How Cooking Made Us Human. Oh. So there is not much in terms of cuisine, few recipes. But, um, so what this is doing is following an interest of mine, which has been with primates, to see how their feeding ecology affects their social relationships. And I've been trying to think about human feeding ecology in relationship to primates for maybe 40 years. And about 10 years ago, a little bit more, it occurred to me that it's really not so important exactly what we eat in terms of how much meat and how much veg. What's really important is that unlike every other primate, humans process their food. And what we have discovered is that there is very strong evidence that humans are biologically adapted to having cooked food. That is, they cannot survive well on raw food. The only circumstances are when you're eating the highest quality domesticated food in an urban environment when you can get it from all around the world. But living in the wild, not possible. So it looks as though this is something that's really deep in our biology, and then you start thinking about the significance of this, and it turns out that many of the ways in which you can expect the um, necessity to eat cooked food uh, have uh, got influences that affect every part of human existence, from anatomy, physiology, cognition, behavior. Well, you've persuaded me. I'm now going to drop my steak to tar and move to burgers. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Wright. Thank you, Bill.